Good morning, Facebook Live friends and fam. I do apologize if I look beat and tired. It's because I am. I just got in from work, and this just has been resting in my spirit. Finances and ministry, ministry finances. And I do have some scripture. You know what? I'm probably going to have to uh, lower my camera. Hold on, y'all. Give me one second. Actually, I don't. Hold on. Let me get this in order here. Oh. Alright, I'm back. Had to go get my Bible. And this just been resting in my spirit. Now... My ministry has shifted in a lot of areas and is going to continue to do so. Um, I'm a young man, as you can see, going places in the Lord. I have no idea how far, how big God wants to take my ministry. But one thing that I do want to be a sweet experience that I don't want to be a headache, and that is the financial aspect. I don't want that to be a headache. So therefore, I think I think we we should keep it super simple. Now, for those of you whose ministries run more like businesses, and I do get that ministry is somewhat of a spiritual business that has some aspects similar to what you would see in a, a a business that's true you know the handling of finances leadership you know recruiting more members but anyway some of you the ministry is so big that you need a financial team well listen for me i like to keep it simple in certain areas i like to keep it simple with certain things and i feel like the financial aspect should be kept simple for the simple fact that so many ministries, so many ministers have been ruined, have fell into sin because of what? Besides sexual perversion, money, finances. It's like once the money gets involved, the ministry is going down. So I want to keep it simple. I want to have a simple foundation before this ministry gets to those proportions. If it be the Lord's will, of course. Don't want to speak pre presumptuously. Uh, so yeah, I want to keep it super simple to the point where even I myself could just take care of the financial part and whatever and the distribution of finances. But anyway, we're just going on this vibration now. Of course, all things are subject to, subject to change should you know, we get to certain crossroads. So anyway, the scripture I have for you is in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. My Bible reads a little bit different. It is a KJV, but it restores all of the original ancient Hebrew names. So I hope you don't be put off by that. Okay, chapter 9. I'm going to read through a couple of verses. Expound on it. All right, so you can get a fuller understanding, okay? First Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1. Am I not an apostle? This is Apostle Paul talking. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Yehoshua HaMashiach, that's Jesus the Christ, our Adonai? Are not ye my work in Adonai? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you for the seal of my apostleship. 
are ye in Adonai? Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. So some of you might be experiencing individuals questioning, you know, your credibility, questioning who you are in God and all this extra stuff. Who's your spiritual parents? Who's your covering? Blah, 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 blah. Paul here is defending his apostleship saying, look, you, if anything, if I'm not an apostle to anybody else, you guys, the Corinthian church, you know that I'm your apostle by the works I have done. So he said, my answer to them is this, that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles? And as the brethren of, Adon of our Adonai and Kepha, that's um, Apostle Peter. Or I only and Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? Watch this. Listen to this here. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? In other words, who goes to war spending his own money in a sense? Who, who financially supports himself going to war? That doesn't make any sense. Whoever is sending him or supporting him to do the warfare supports him financially. Okay? Who goeth warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit you're of? Who plants a garden and don't even eat what they plant? That don't make no sense. They eat from their work. Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or saith not the Torah the same also? For it is written in the Torah of Moshe, or that's Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn, Doth Elohim take care of oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. Listen to this, y'all. If we have sown... Unto you spiritual things. Is it a great thing if we reap your carnal blessings? In other words, if we have taken care of you spiritually by being your spiritual leaders, is it a crime if we ask for you of material things to meet some of our needs? Because we're taking care of your spiritual needs. That's why we are spiritual leaders. So is it a crime to reap of your natural things such as your money or some other form of substance that is necessary to survive and have an enjoyable existence in this mortal body? If others be partakers of this power over you, are we not rather? In other words, you have natural leaders such as your boss and those different type of things that require of you some of your natural things. So what about us as your spiritual leaders? Don't we deserve those things as well is what he's saying. Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Mashiach, or Christ. Do ye not know, and these are the two flagship scriptures, do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the, te of the temple? And they which wait at the altakers are partakers of the altar. Even so hath Adonai ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. So what are you saying, Apostle? I'm saying that if you have someone that is taking care of your spiritual needs, such as um, a counselor, a personal prophet, an apostle, a, a, a pastor, someone that is feeding you spiritual needs, taking care of your spiritual needs, you should take care of them physically. And that includes your finances. It's not a crime if they ask you to help them financially. Now, let me make some distinctions here before you start tuning me out. 
I'm not talking about leaders that manipulate you into giving of your finances. The seed, the seed, the seed, the seed, the seed, the seed, the seed. I mean, I mean, just raping the seed. I'm not talking about those leaders. I'm not talking about those who threaten you um, into giving your tithes and offerings. I'm not talking about those leaders who bully you into helping them financially in ministry. I'm talking about leaders who do this full time with 100% passion, vocation, calling, and this is their bread and butter. They bread and butter. They eat, sleep, and dream ministry or ministering to you or empowering you in some form of way that's who i'm talking about they are worthy of their hire as the scripture says they should be able to live from the gospel i'm talking about those leaders the real leaders that don't have to manipulate you and make a big deal about raising money for this or raising money for that uh -uh. so when I start getting engagements to preach here, minister there, do this here, do that there, I want to keep the financial aspect of this ministry very simple. For example, I like to base my thinking on that where Jesus told the disciples when he was sending them out in teams, you know, don't take this, don't take a pair extra pair of shoes don't take an extra pair of cloak just your walking stick don't take the money stick wherever i you know wherever you find shelter whoever takes you in rest there larger there for the time you're in that city that type of thing and what i interpret from that scripture is don't make money the reason why you will or will not minister here or there. Let me say that again. Don't make money the reason why you ain't going to preach there. You ain't going to preach there. At that point, it becomes about the money. I get that you have needs, bills to pay, a rent to pay, or a mortgage, car note. Those are real needs. Some of you, quite frankly, your team is too large. You have too much of a large entourage. Some of you, I mean, you, you like to go in the finest of hotels, fly first class, private jet. You, you got to be picked up in this type of vehicle. That's too much. I, that's too much. If you like it so much, you pay out of your own money. But again, all I would need is... A place to stay while I'm there on that assignment that you called me for. You know, pay my plane fare or bus fare or tr train fare, however I get there. And a place to stay. Some churches like to give honorarium, so they'll ask. What I would say personally is give me what is proper. So that's between you and the Holy Ghost. You understand what I'm saying? That's between you and the Holy Ghost because at the end of the day, if you call me there and I agree, apparently there is a spiritual assignment that the Lord is interested in me completing. I should not be worrying about the financial aspect to say, well, that's too low. I'm not going to come and minister. I'm not going to come and share my anointing and the ministry God has placed within me. That's crazy. So that's why I said in the beginning, I would like to keep it very simple. Keep the financial aspect very simple. You ain't going to go away and preach for free unless you can cover your own expenses. I know some you know pastors do. Right now, I'm not there yet. So if you was to call me to minister here and there, especially if it includes leaving outside of my city, obviously, you're going to have to pay the transportation to get there and either a hotel or even if you have a room in your house because i'm definitely going to be humble about it even if you have a room in your house you know an attic at the top of the house a basement anywhere that is decent is what i'm saying because at the end of the day we have an assignment to do we have a kingdom to build 
We have ministries to help out and build. So when it comes to finances and ministry, people, keep it simple. Your team don't need to be that large. Keep it simple. Because again, you as the man of God, it's almost like when they were saying, um, I'm paraphrased. We don't have time to be sitting here waiting on tables and giving to the Jewish widows, giving to the Greek widows. We don't have time for that. We're here to pray and we're here to, to focus on the ministry of the word and the ministry of the gospel. So I shouldn't be sitting here having an attitude and saying, you know, that's not enough money. I don't sleep in this hotel. I don't fly. Coach, I ain't coming. That's crazy. It should be, all right, let's have a conversation. Okay, boom. This is sufficient enough for my personal needs. I'm really focused at the end of the day and reaching those souls in your church or your ministry or wherever the heck you would call me to. I'm interested in the spiritual work. Let's just keep the financial part simple. Even if it's you, you know, you pay the transportation, you pay the housing situation, whether the hotel or it's your house or something of the sort, and you take up an offering from me, I'm fine. That's cool. I'm here for the work. I don't want it to be about money. I don't want it to be about money. And I want to stay humble as I can. I want to stay humble. And that's my encouragement to you if you're up and coming minister the same way. I encourage you, don't make ministry about money. God will provide for you. He will take care of your needs. He will take care of your needs. Okay? He will take care of your needs. Be humble. Stay humble. If God is sending you there, it don't matter how much little they have. Humble yourself. God will provide. Even if you have to make up the other half to get there. You know? Let's become ministry oriented. Let's become focused on the kingdom. Let's become focused on the souls that we're going there to minister to. Don't make it about the money. Because once it becomes about the money, your, your ministry is going down. It's already doomed to fail. It's already failing. Because that's going to be the determining factor whether you decide to release God's anointing in you. You didn't anoint yourself. God anointed you. You understand what I'm saying? So don't do that. Humble yourself. Humble yourself with the master's feet. You know, so that's my encouragement. So y'all keep me in prayer. Y'all keep me in prayer. Please, I beg you. Anytime you think of me. Anytime you see my face, pray for me. Sometimes I go through and nobody don't know because I don't say anything. It's not that I, I don't want to humble myself before the people, but sometimes, number one, you can't trust everybody. Everybody don't pray. They say they will pray, but won't pray for you, you know, and I don't want to seem like I'm needy, but sometimes I go through. So y'all keep me in prayer. Reach out, say something nice every now and then. Now and again, if the Lord impresses on your heart to, uh, um, you know, give a offering to say, hey man, just thinking about you, man. Go get yourself something to eat. Go get yourself something, something nice. Go get a haircut, whatever. Allow the Lord to use you. Allow the Lord to use you. And I just want to prophesy over your day that it's going to be blessed. It's going to be prosperous. I want to prophesy if you have a ministry that your ministry is going to prosper, that you will stay humble before the Lord. Don't make it about the money, but make it about the ministry. I'm going to prophesy over this ministry that the workspace is going to blow up and become global. It's going to become worldwide. People from all over are going to come support this ministry in the physical and also in the virtual, from near, from afar, that we will never have a need of anything financial. But the financial part will just take care of itself. That it will be like acts. There will be no need. Everybody have everything that they need to have. And that's the decree. That's the prophecy. I decree, decree and declare over your ministry and my ministry. Now, this is Apostle Travis L. And... I want you to have a blessed day. If you love this video, please like, comment. If you are my YouTube fam, like, comment, share, and subscribe. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Shalom. Blessings and honor. Glory and power. Be unto the ancient of
days. Wow, this shirt looks, I just lifted my hands. I saw this shirt. It's almost like I seen like it was army fatigues. So I decree and declare that we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. You're a soldier. I prophesy that you're a soldier. Amen. And that I prophesy that you will get spiritually the benefits of a soldier. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. Shalom.